to start my speech with, have you ever heard? Instead, I'm going to read your mind. When you see this title, you're probably humming the tune of Plant vs. Zombies in your head already, isn't it? Well, allow me to paint that full picture for you still. Okay, this is rather creepy, but listen. Close your eyes and imagine this. An undead, flesh-eating corpse is staggering towards you with outstretched hands like dead branches from an ancient tree. Blood dripping, sickly gray fingertips. And you smell its rotten flesh. You see its lifeless red eyes. And you hold your breath, waiting. You hear its unsignalized footsteps. Okay, you can open your eyes. I'll stop here so I don't give you a nightmare tonight. So by this point, we all agree that what I just said was already a comprehensive image of the stereotypical zombie figure itself. But what did I say that each of us is responsible for creating a zombie like the one I have just described? And what if I tell you that these zombies that we talk about have more symbolist meanings than simply to jump scare teenagers in haunted houses, and that they deserve a lot more cultural appreciation than what people think of them now? Okay. And in case you are doubting my sanity, Yes, I'm talking about the same thing as you're thinking. The same flesh-eating, brainless, walking dead, well, that type of thing that we all love in a horror movie. And as I take you on a trip back to the 18th century, you can soon see why everything I just said makes crystal clear sense. Our first stop is the past version of the modern-day modern country Haiti, where voodoo culture was etched into the very root of local beliefs. But in the 1780s, it was still a prominent colony site called Saint-Domingue, also a major producer of coffee and sugar. Behind the accumulation of wealth, countless local laborers were forced to work day and night in the scorching sun of plantations. And as the same process repeated itself day after day after day, people gradually lost their ability to think. By surrendering their spirit and soul to brutal labor, they became nothing more than walking shells of people. As if to reflect the oppression of plantation workers, something called zombie, spelled Z-O-N-B-I, meaning corpse in Haitian language, emerged in local folk. The legends say that these dead people are revived and brought out of their graves only to do whatever the reviver tells them to do, like how plantation workers blindly follow the orders of slave masters. And as, to, as soon, stories spread around the colony, and there you have it. The depiction of the mindless walking dead became the first type of the two most prominent zombie figures in Haitian culture, also known as the soulless slave. It's the deepest fear of local laborers because it symbolizes the worst their lives can become, a mindless working machine. You might ask now, is that it? Of course not. There's a Chinese saying by Lu Xun that you might all be familiar with. 不在沉默中爆发,就在沉默中灭亡. And in English, it's translated as either rise in silence or be silenced. Well, the same goes for Haitian zombies. If the first type, the soulless slave, is the type of zombies that are silenced by labor, the second type, the revolutionary slave, is those who decided that they had enough of silence and decided to start an uprising. In 1791, the slaves finally revolted, and after a long 12-year war, Haiti finally gained its independence as a country. During the war, the revolutionary slave figure gradually emerged in local culture. 
a plantation slave driven mad by oppression, rebelling in all sorts of ways, including poisoning their masters. And in some stories, they have lost too much faith in humanity that they would start randomly attacking everyone around them, including state uh, slave masters, plantation owners, and even friends and family. Well, in this way, zombies also became the worst object of fear for slaves and plantation masters and the colonizers, essentially everyone alike. I'll have to remind you that by this point, the zombie figure still hasn't made made it outside of Haiti yet. What happened here stayed inside of Haiti until in the early 1900s, oops, uh, in the early 1900s, the US occupied Haiti in the hope of gaining more business opportunities to dehumanize local resistance and to justify that invasion some American cultural influencers decided to add a horrifying flesh-eating aspect to our beloved local cultural icon. So among them is a guy called William Seabrook, a travel journalist, who wrote a book called The Magic Island. It's a book that made the zombie figure into a cannibalistic monster that has completely lost their mind and humanity and randomly attacks everyone they see. Well, just about scary as we see today. And guess what? After the book was published in America and spread to the rest of the world, it basically became the zombie symbol that we see nowadays. Strangely, though zombies today are quite a cultural phenomenon, if you pay attention to pop culture as much as I do, you might find it a bit odd that most works containing the zombie symbol has been more or less censored at some point. And it's not because of the blood. It's not because of the violence. It's something else. In the 1930s, the thing that was forbidden about zombies was the independence of women in zombie film that was depicted. And later, before the 1960s, it was the first thoughts of the American civil rights movements that censorship was trying to oppress. And at some point, in Germany, it was the first ecological message that maybe our Earth is dying and it's time for the capitalist humans to do something. And as you can see from all these examples, that all zombies around the world, they always mean something. Something that we cannot say out loud. Something that is always censored and hidden. And the question is, what? Let me introduce you to something called crip theory. You know the term crippled, which, okay. Uh, you know the term crippled, which has a certain negative connotation to it. Being crippled means that you're imperfect, you're disabled, and that you can't do something very well. Crip, on the other hand, is a neutral term. Officially, it is defined as a combination of feminist, queer, and disability studies which examines how cultural and social norms have imagined and affected individuals and communities. In other words, it's a study of the hidden minority in our world. Now, we live in a normative world, and by normative, I mean that everyone follows a set of rules, especially those related with time. When to get a job, when to have children, when to retire, it's all written in the invisible timeline that's imposed on us by society. And if you miss any of that, you go disabled in the normal stream of time. For example, if you decide to go DINK, it's spelled D-I-N-K, stands for Double Income No Kids, when you're supposed to have children, you are no different from losing a limb or worse in society. This is when you fall into a category called crip temporality, meaning temporarily crip. Or in, well, if we phrase it in a way that pop culture or young people would accept it, you become a weirdo, essentially. And your dick, so what? So you are a weirdo. And so is everyone who has psychological, physical, or mental anomalies that don't fit into society's felt, like paralysis or ADHD 
or the list goes on and on. And as the term temporality implies, society always believes that these people are just going through some things like a rebellious teenager, or they're just having a temporary disease that will eventually be cured. And worse, everyone always assumes that you would want to be cured instead of staying as what you are, as a conscious choice. So that's the problem. We have no right to stray away from the path that society has imposed on us. Um, and that's why zombies are censored so much. It's because they're uh, it's because they're different and that they're dangerous in a crib aspect. Think about it and you'll see how zombies defy literally every normality that we have known and imagined in our lives. For example, they're defying our reproductive normativity because zombies don't have children. And later, they also disrupt our normal notion of age because zombies don't grow old and they're essentially immortal. And what's more, they don't eat, they don't drink, they guess, guess what? They don't sleep and they don't get married either. So to sum it up, they're essentially opposing every belief that our precious, fragile, normal society stands for. You can see now it's not because of the art and it's not because of the culture, not because of colonization and Haiti and everything in the past, no. Let's face it, frankly, it's 2023 and we're still censoring zombies because of, the, because of the potential that they bring. A potential that says maybe crip is just a neutral term and nothing else. Maybe it's not something bad. Maybe it's something we can accept. It's something that we can take as a new flexibility and make it permanent as a part of our normal life. And let me tell you that this change of moving people into those who can see zombies and accept zombies, this change is already happening. No matter how hard people try to, take a, to turn a blind eye to the unknown. Take COVID-19 for example. How much of, of your life have changed permanently after COVID? For example, we're all students, so I'll take online learning for example. We are all taken online learning and all of those digital resources offered to us as granted. I, as an, as an individual, no longer think the air is filled with a horrible disease. I can't go to school, so I'm stuck at home with this trash computer and I have to deal with like all of these online materials and digital assignments, which are crazy. And I'll have to stay that way until the education system is cured enough for me to go back to good, normal school. No, we're not thinking that, and we're not recovering anymore. You can see, we're slowly stepping into a world of zombies. We're accepting these things, these drastic changes, as our new normal. And like I said, it's happening everywhere, to everyone. One last question. What exactly are we walking into? The answer of futurity. This might just be a mindset for now, but I believe it will become the truest of realities. We will no longer fear crypt communities in this future because of their potential and force them to cure their uniqueness. No, instead, we'll take this chance, embrace it, and shape it into a new world that everyone can live in. So let's all take this small step together. Let's all be a little more conscious of the social rules that surround us. Let's all be a little more aware of the crypt communities that we see in our daily lives. And when we see them, we see the 100 shades of potential that they bring. And we would always contemplate how to forge this into brightness, how to make this into a new world. I would like to think, think of it as a world where the sun shines bright upon human and zombie alike. So, why? The last question. Because, in the end, zombies are not so bad after all. <laughs>